everybody. Today, I'm your host, your bargain bin, Nicole. Uh, my name is Paige, and welcome to the show, Rugs for Your Bunk Beds. It's the show where we talk about rugs for um, different kind of bunk beds, you know, the ones that have the platform before you get into the bed. You don't want it 30 feet in the bed, so you got to wipe off your feet on the rug. Anyway, so, or you could also think of bed rugs as the welcome mats for the monsters under the bed. Um, yeah, so I'm your host tonight, a little different this week, and my co-host today is going to be Kelly, a familiar face. Have him. Right, intro, music. intro music is new for me. I haven't experienced that one yet. Yeah, sorry. Did I step on what you were saying there? No. Mm. Um, no, not at all. As long so, as you wipe off your feet first, I'm okay with the stepping on. So. Right. Mm -hmm. So I didn't... I, I don't think we have time to get into the monsters under the bed again, because that that was a whole tangent last time. Oh, it's a common but, it's a common thing. That's all that I bring up. It's the same thing every time. Don't worry. I'm totally right. Well, because my big concern here with our new like rug selling endeavor, if that's what it is, is I I don't think you should use the term bed rugs. I think that's gonna be really bad branding. Oh and, how's that? well it I think it's gonna make people think that it's going to give people an itchy feeling. Itchy, right. Because they're going to be thinking of bed bugs. Oh, bed bugs. Oh, I was thinking like maybe, you know, shag carpet or something. Right. Give the itch feeling. Well, and the way you phrase it at the beginning, like rugs mm -hmm. for your bunk bed, I'm mm -hmm. all on board with. Okay, okay. But I feel like bed rugs, you know, especially with... Um, you know, just any any like salespeople slurring their words, or maybe with like a thicker accent. Like we could get into some real trouble with people who are absolutely going to believe that we're just selling them like parasites that are going to be on their skin, extremely hard to get off. And I'm not sure that's going to be good for sales. If like I'm being totally honest. Right, right. You know how those um, sales salesroom people always slur their words together. But yeah, well, I agree. I mean, the shortening, the shortening, we can do without. We can stick to rugs for your bunk beds, and that can be even just the title on the front of the store. It can be, it's a few letters, it's a few words, sure, but yeah. Well, and I agree that like the ideal salesperson is like articulate. They enunciate really well. They're erudite. They're thoughtful. All these things, but. They're aromatic. Been, they're aerodynamic. Yeah. Yes, I agree. They're aerospace engineers, like whatever you want. But yeah. my thinking is, assuming that the budget we have for this new direction selling rugs is in the same price range as the budget we have for this show right now, I think the salespeople we're going to be able to afford are going to be like volunteer not, salespeople volunteer salespeople yeah. or people that were fired from a better store for i don't know like drinking in the back room or you know selling illegal contraband kind of like under the under the table at the store or you know those under kind of bed. people and yeah, yeah yeah under the bed right exactly yeah. and like maybe they're trafficking monsters under the bed it doesn't matter, but like we'll take them. But with that being said, I, I don't think I don't foresee any problems with hiring these people as long as we don't call them bed rugs. That's the only issue I can foresee. Right. But and on the other side, do we even need to sell the rugs? Like we could this is you know how there's um well like it used to be blogs and nowadays it's more video on YouTube where there's like uh, a list of cool things that you can find on the internet. So like maybe we just have a video each week of cool rugs that we find that you could use, you know? 
Top so we're not, we're not we're not selling anything. Is what we don't saying. we don't have to sell anything. If there's enough there's enough buying and selling in this world. I think I don't want to add to that at that's, the moment. It's it's an idea, you know. That's fair, uh, and I think mm -hmm. that will certainly guarantee that our budget will remain the same. So at least we have the consistency yeah. nailed down. It's, uh, like I said, you can expect the same from me every week. Yeah, that's right. And we should probably bring out our guest at some point. But I do, I do have a few more concerns here. Like, why are we wiping our feet before we get on the bed? Like, why wasn't this happening when we came in the house? Right. You come in the house, you wipe your feet, you take off your shoes, and then you walk around the house in your socks. But your socks are pretty much just like rags on mm -hmm. your, that you're wiping on the floor. It's, it's what it's what they are, and then when you finally get to like you know, nine p.m., eight p.m. for some, you know, that's one a.m. for for some, you finally get to this time where you want to go to bed, and you've been in the bathroom, you've been in the kitchen, you've just wiped these rag feet on, you know, all of your house pretty much and you don't want you take off your socks but like there's there's a residue i feel like you know when you get the brown sock okay so maybe i'm less clean than you that's fine we don't need to talk about that that's not what we're talking about so you just want to wipe off maybe there's like crumbs that stick to your feet if you maybe go sockless especially in the summer you picked up a few crumbs on your sticky little sweaty feet and need to wipe them off before you hop in the bed or you're just hopping into bed for like a, a book read or a or a needle knit or a YouTube session pre bedtime, and you don't want crumbs in your bed from the floor. There, that's my pitch. Well, I can't argue with any of that. All right, but Please you know, don't. but you know who can and will argue with all of that. All of it. Yeah. And that is our guest, whose our guest. name you are going to be pronouncing flawlessly. Isn't that right, Paige? Right. Yeah, I think we we didn't plan this. Um, our guest tonight is counselor and, uh, or sorry, running for counselor in the Pihesawin ward in Edmonton, Gisela Perez Ariano. And we'd like her to join us now. Ta-da! Oh no! Oh no! The, the video hasn't kicked in yet. It's a it's oh. about to step all over you with its dirty, dirty socks, or maybe it just oh. won't load at all, which is I mean, another kind of fun. Again, I'm not used to the intro music, so I think that's what Kelly is referring to here, Gisela. Yeah, and I'm used to the intro music working, but you know, sometimes we all have to adapt on our feet, don't we? On our feet. Oh, and there it goes. Anyway, you were saying. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so Chrisella, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm pretty excited yeah. to be here. All right. And uh, so I believe uh, I had so rudely interrupted. You were going to like voraciously disagree with everything Paige was saying. Is that correct? 100%. <laughs> You're, you guys are lucky that you have to remove the, the, the shoes and the socks, and then now you have bunk bed rugs. In Mexico, you go all the way with the shoes, like, and then you go shoes in the bed, and then you have run. Like, um, some some people have, like, this, um, like, runaway mat in the bed. So Ooh. when people go with the shoes on there, then it doesn't dirty the cover. It only takes the rug. But we use our shoes. My mom has tried has tried to get the Canadian way, but nope, they're still using shoes in the house. Shoes in the house. Americans do that too, right? I thought that was only their thing, to be honest. I'm a little bit shocked here. We're learning now, things. Now, you do say we're lucky in Canada that we're taking our shoes off before bed. And I want to dive into that a little bit. Like, are you saying that 
there is a reason in Mexico you're unable to take your shoes off before bed? Like, have they been like taped to your feet by someone or? Have you tried to unbuckle all the sandals thing just before bed when it's starting to green and then you run, wanted to run into bed like, and then all those straps like all around the like, you know, the ones that have like tiny little straps and then they have like a little buckle hole and then you have to untie them all. Oh, like little inside. belt buckles on them? Yes. Ah. And I mean, I, can... I can't relate to that exact experience, but I have desperately tried to remove a lot of like layers of shoelace from some heavy work boots <laughs> when I'm desperately trying to get like through my door and into the bathroom. But that's not a discussion that is becoming of a future city councillor. So I'm wondering if we should steer clear of that. Sure. Let's talk about more serious topic more than shoes and rugs. Well, I'm I'm definitely more interested to stay on the rugs at least for a, a few minutes minutes more. I'm very interested mm. in the the rug that's on the bed that you're talking about. What I'm envisioning is you know when you go to a like uh, what's it called the brick or bed bath no bed bath and beyond doesn't have beds actually yeah. I'm not sure maybe they do but they have the show beds all lined up one after another and then you get to try them out and they have this plastic cover on the bottom part of the bed where your feet go because everybody has their shoes on in the store and i'm wondering if it's similar to that it is very similar to that very um, like plastic it is not plastic it's actually like um cloth material just it's just ah. like maybe this wide and then long that goes across the bed so then you just put it at the, at the bottom of the bed. So then also we have the siesta, right? So then you go after mm. around two to have like a, a little nap and you just don't take your shoes off. Right. Because you just, after the siesta, you you hop right back on your feet and continue and whatever you were doing immediately before you had your siesta. Exactly. Or that's naps. how I envision it. Yeah, power nap. Yeah. So you're yeah. saying these are a cloth material like, for example, a rug? Yeah, mm -hmm. like um, like kind of uh, the rugs that we put in a hallway that they're long, but like not too wide. Kind of bad, but in a bed. <laughs> I don't know how to explain <laughs> it. That sounds like a bed rug to me as, as, as uh, close to uh, what we're trying to steer clear of which is bed bugs, but it sounds exactly like a bed rug more than a, a rug for your bed. I don't know. Pretty much. Well, our, our saving grace might be that bed rug translates a lot better into Spanish because I know, Paige, you're not so hot on selling things, but it's already sounding like Mexico could be a huge market for our bed rugs. You know, we got <laughs> yes. the show logo on them and, you know, people would ask like hey what's this big logo and then they'd be like well it's this really great show you can watch it it's you know a reasonable time zone for us i mean i think there's like a huge market there maybe even right. better than here because i personally don't remember having many rugs in or around my bunk beds when i was growing up well did you have laminate or or hardwood in your bedroom no i had carpet so your whole room was a rug I mean, I didn't, I don't remember using it like for the purposes of wiping my feet. I feel like that might have been a bit counterproductive in terms of the overall cleanliness, but I don't know. I might be wrong there. I almost feel like, and stop me if I'm wrong, but, but just like the carpet being under your feet is almost an act of wiping your foot, depending on how much you lift your feet when you walk, of course, but. I don't know how everybody feels about that comment. <laughs> Old teenage drag their feet from 13 to 20, probably 25. Right. Yeah. I think that's a pretty reasonable assumption. Yeah, and I've definitely stopped that. And I walk extremely normally now and uh, absolutely never have this issue. So I'm, uh, I'm glad to hear that's normal. I'm normal. We're normal here. <sighs> All right. Everybody so, in the world is normal. Well, that's also great to hear. Um, so I feel like, um, Risa, we want to use your time a little a little productively, which is going to be comfortable and 
uh, are uncomfortable and scary for us, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a go here. Uh oh. So, so um, yeah, we'll we'll get to some questions about like your award, your candidacy, stuff like that. But I think the real burning question on everyone's minds, I'm assuming, you know, the questions on my mind are the same as everyone else's because, you know, I'm normal. We're all normal. We've been over this. My question is, what exactly does a school board trustee do and which one should I be voting for? <laughs> That's a pretty good question. I think you're you're putting me on the spot there. Um, for for my word, I think uh, there is there there is some words actually. Are you gonna go Catholic or public? That's that will be the first question, I guess. Uh, I mean, I am going to tell myself a little bit here and explain that I haven't quite gotten around to fully doing my research on everyone in my ward yet, and by everyone I mean anyone, um, because I've been doing extremely important stuff like, uh, I don't know, making logo spin for this show. And, uh, but I, I'm kind of getting to that. Um, so like, I'm a, I'm a public school kind of person. I feel like I just probably would abstain from voting on a Catholic trustee, if that answers your question. Yeah, of course. Um, it is funny because uh, some words are, maybe you need to do your research because there are some words that only have one candidate that, and at the end you might not need to vote for them because they already win. So what, what you're saying is I, I could be running against these people and I might have a shot. Yes. Is, it, is it too late to get my candidacy in for, you know, like a, a school little, board trustee? Just a little. <laughs> Just like a month, maybe. Hmm. When when does the registration open for the next election? Because I could, I feel <laughs> like I could really be starting my campaign right now. I think the next registration will be in four years. All right. Can uh, you can you remind time. can you remind me in like three and a half years? I will put it in my calendar. <laughs> yeah, I'm just message the show that on way. Twitter. That's that's wonderful because one of us has to be right. Mm -hmm. I think we need so, to all be. Yeah. I'd like to hear, actually, Kelly, uh, just mm. for putting you on the spot, I'd love to hear what your um, your slogan would be, your quick and catchy slogan for running for the school. Oh, I've got like, I've got like five I'm kind of working with, you know, like we've got some really simple ones, like uh, you can trust me as your trustee, you know, that's pretty nice. Um, and uh, uh, something like I don't know, drive me in like a trusty nail. I don't know. I've got to, I've got to figure out exactly how I'm going to make that pun work for me. But those those are two of the front runners. Um, or I, you know, this might be a bit wordy, but uh, like if I can get a bigger sign, maybe I can fit in like driven to find out what a trustee does. I think that's I think that could be really powerful that people will take the time to read that one. Right. Amazing. Yeah. See, it already looks great. Yeah, it looks great on uh, on screen for sure. Gisela, do you have? Do I you have trust you any to quick be my trustee? Oh, I like nice. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I did promise two more. So, oh. I mean, I'm done with listening. I was curious if mm. Gisela has <laughs> yeah. has any um any quick and not dirty, quick and clean, I guess. <laughs> For my campaign? Yeah, that you like to like to go to or or change up every now and then. L lately, we ha we have been doing word for change. X mark the spot. Word for change. Nice. Uh, and um, it was more to bring people out to the voting stations, uh, but uh, that that has been one. Uh, we have always also say that because uh, my uh, business cards are uh, compostable, so they have seeds on them and to grow uh, clovers. And uh, another thing has been said that we're seeds, so no matter what you put to us, we always will regrow. Amazing. I do I like, like yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Paige. I was just, I was just reinf yeah, reinforcing, like, I really like the, the seed paper idea. That's great. Yeah. 
They are all pretty solid. I am a little bewildered, I have to say, that it doesn't sound like any of them involve like really clunky or obvious puns, which, as I understand, is kind of the main driving force in how a slogan should work. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I won't be looking into it. So, yeah, like, it, it, was that something that came up in the drafting process? Were you throwing a lot of puns around in the room, or was it always right to things that are, you know, like mature and coherent and smart? One for change uh, came from yesterday at seven in the morning. Uh, my partner called me on his way to work and he's, he's like, I have the greatest idea. He's like, why are you calling me this early? I'm normally sleepy <laughs> at this time. And he's like, oh, I just need to tell you this. This is our new slogan. And like, okay, let's go with that. Uh, so X mark the spot. Uh, for change. Yeah, that's so, great. He's the mastermind uh, behind my puns. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, so getting just back to the trusty thing for a minute, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Like, do you do you kind of form secret alliances with the trustees in your ward, or is there just a bit of a like an unspoken agreement of who's kind of on whose level and who you want to? who you expect to be like sharing a lot of people's uh, votes with or what's kind of the thought process there? Or are they kind of below you and you pretend they don't exist, you know, like the cops do with peace officers? Uh, yes, I think, um, I, I think uh, we're, as an immigrant, we're a little bit out of the niche and uh, the networks. Uh, some people have been like working together for so many years and they know each other for so many years and, in the communities and volunteering and the school board and the community leagues and all of that. And uh, we as an immigrant, sometimes we have a little bit more um, of the downside of that because our uh, social network is more reduced. So then we don't know mo more much about the person uh, from the beginning of times, just uh, for the late like last few years or now that there are candidates and the name is out there and you do a little bit of research and you might know about them but you don't know them personally and especially with COVID I know I like I have met Giselle one time in person but other than that we sometimes talk or share tweets here and there or like each other's tweets a lot of the other candidates as well but I have never seen them in person but I know who they are, I know where they're running, but with COVID it's also more virtually that I have met so many people now, especially through the campaign. Okay, and uh, so is this your first election running? This is a serious question. Yes, it is. And what, what kind of like drove you to get into it? Pretty much a little bit of what you were saying uh, that uh, the candidate uh, that was running in my ward was running by himself. So it was like, is this a little too late to challenge him? Just in, just, so, just to make this a democracy and give people an option uh, and not just win by default. Uh, so everything started with that uh, and then start digging and uh, what is going on in the ward. Um, I was a little bit upset about... Um, the park close to my place, uh, the winter was a little bit rough this past winter and the roads were pretty ice, icy. Um, and then I, I, I always wrote an email and tried to be like just a active constituent and I never got really good answers uh, and I didn't think that was fair. So everything was like a snowball one thing after the other. And then in May, I was like, I think it's not too late yet to run. So here I am. Okay, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm almost genuinely surprised by that, that there really is still, there's only the two of you running right now. So, I mean, I it seems like a great way to set the stage for you here now to, you know, talk a lot of trash about this man. I'm sure he's awful. Like, do you have any? I, I have never met him. Um, the, uh, the as you may know the forums were not um very like they were not organized by the city so it was more about the associations and groups inviting some candidates to do virtual uh forums so we 
I think we were in one together, but it was never a conversation on a one to one basis. Mm -hmm. So I have not met him. Uh, I, I, I don't think nobody's a bad person and I will never trash anybody. Uh, I, I will just say we just so opposites, like starting from male, female. <laughs> sure. I mean, like, I think that actually never having met someone could work in your favor here because, you know, that kind of frees us up to really, we can just make up rumors about him if you want. And uh, like, I, I, I admire your, your, your tact and your professionalism here saying that, you know, you're, you're not somebody who wants to trash talk anyone. And I, I, I totally admire that. But with that being said, you know, Paige and I can just start making up rumors about this man that if we've never met either. And you can just sit and nod sagely if that's, you know, more preferable to you and or then no, no one can claim shake you your head. It. yeah just shake your head at us and just no comments and no nah, no nah, nah. this message is not approved by gisela candidate yeah. for warpy heads away. yeah it's like uh it's like good cop bad cop but instead it's um good counselor sorry uh, is counselor the right sort of term or running for counselor is that candidate, wrong candidate good candidate bad live show comedy hosts right sort of dynamic trying to create polemic yeah. polarizing comments and and things like that I mean, we'll make I you think... look real good is what we're saying yeah and it really would it would fit really consistently with previous episodes <laughs> of this show which is always has a help. dynamic of good guest bad host it's just sort of our brand right mm -hmm. so yeah. I'll, I'll propose this as an activity i will give you three scurrilous rumors about your opponent, Tim Cartmel, and you just, you pick one that you think is the most untrue and you can defend his honor on that one. Okay, I'll okay. try. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, or, you know, I mean, we can split them up. Paige, do you want to offer any of these scurrilous rumors? I will offer one, but I would love for you to go first, Kelly. All right, so I've heard from a really reliable source that Tim Cartmel is actually hoping to rezone three of the neighborhoods in his ward um, away from the kind of mixed use commercial residential that they are and into a unregulated nuclear waste dumping site. So that's that's something I think you could really run against because that seems unpopular. <laughs> right, but I've also heard from a reputable and only ever truthful source that Tim Cart Cartmel Carmel, uh, Cart Cartmel. Cartmel is notorious for pronouncing caramel like his last name. So he doesn't call them caramels or caramels. He calls them Cartmels. It's notorious for it. At every any chance, any time that uh, the candy comes up, he's, he's putting his own name on it. It's rude. Yeah, I I did hear that one as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've also heard that he um, is one of those people who's extremely angry about the renaming of the wards to indigenous names. And he wanted the reward um, at the time, yeah, which he was the only one living in, to be renamed Ward Cartmel. Mm. So of those three... Likes to name things after himself. <laughs> yeah, we, we certainly don't have time and we wouldn't expect you to put in the work to deny all those things. But if you want to take the time to deny one, I think that would make you look really good. Yeah. I think uh, I, I can tackle at least two. I think everybody has been against nuclear weapons since 1945. So I hope nobody's going back to that soon. Um, and... And, and well, I think it would be the waste from nuclear power plants. So, you know, like nuclear has a lot of potential as like a clean, uh, like when handled correctly, like low carbon emission way of generating power for our power grid, unless you're doing it the way uh, Tim wants to do it, which is basically to build a bunch allegedly. of orphanages. To build Tim a bunch allegedly of, wants to Tim allegedly it. wants to build a bunch <laughs> of uh, orphanages in uh, Ward Piesuin, or which, as he would like to have it, Tim uh, Ward Cartmel, and right. then simply have all the waste trucked in there and kind of just allowed to ooze across the ward until it hits the concrete walls at the edges of the ward. He's also going to build those, I've heard, allegedly. Oh, Wait. another one, three in one. <laughs> but uh, 
So if he cannot pronounce his last name, then wouldn't be word caramel instead of caramel? Right. Is, well, if that's... he was against pronouncing the the words, that's true. And that's a great question. And these are the questions we need to be asking in these elections: is like, what exactly is your last name? How do you pronounce it? Without... I lost that game already. Right. <laughs> And, you know, and ex like exactly where are the boundaries of this wall going to be that keep the nuclear waste in? Like these are these are the things I haven't heard these kind of things discussed even once in this entire election. And I've been paying maybe 10 percent attention. It, hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> For a municipal election, it absolutely is. <laughs> it, that, that means we're improving that means we're more entertaining than past elections and people is paying more attention so 10 percent is already a win absolutely and i mean we could speculate all day i would probably credit the majority of that improvement to almost entirely to our previous episode on the election last week yes the giraffe yeah that's exactly it she's pretty cool and and i think uh, I was just thinking before the the uh, the live. I was like, "Oh, now I'm envy uh, Giselle because she wear a pajama the whole evening." And I was like, "That feels so comfy right now." It's like, can can we all be in PJs for the event? Uh, I mean, we can always take an intermission, and I mean, you can go grab your pajamas. It's never too late. We have the technical difficulties button, which that that'll that'll take us through quite a while. I do feel a little shorter that I wasn't invited to wear pajamas from the start. I you washed last nice week's. Piece. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, not that I, I, I do regret to uh, say that I don't own a onesie at this time. Um, so that part would be impossible. However, pajamas, I do have. Sure. I mean, yeah, we could one up the onesies with pajamas. I mean, you could even take that nice uh, blue and or red background behind you, Paige, and just kind of turn it into like a toga. That could be that could be a theme. We could have a toga oh, show. This this baby is covering um, covering all of the mess that resides in my room. So it is staying exactly where it is. It's my <laughs> real life background. It will stay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that does seem clever. I mean, then I, if I had a plan like that, I wouldn't have to frantically jam all my mess directly behind that couch over there so that it's not particularly visible on the stream. Mm -hmm. I can also just make myself entirely invisible by doing this. And really, nice. this way we get more Gisela, and I think that's great. It is. That is a Thank lovely you. painting in your background, Gisela, as well. Oh, thank you. Actually, that was made by a friend of mine. She's now living in Victoria. Lucky her. Oh, really? Amazing. Yeah. Oh, switch to me. That is some bad quality video on my end. <laughs> That's right. Donate mm -hmm. now to the show and we can upgrade our version of StreamYard to record in uh, full HD, which I assume that uh, Paige's camera is suited for. Oh, totally entirely suited. The webcam that is in my computer screen, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we did have a bit of an attempt at sincerity, and we seem to have gotten off the track. And uh, I, our off-screen producer will probably cattle prod me if I don't do this soon. So uh, getting back to your uh, slogan here, Gisela, which I'm gonna put on the screen, what kind of change are we voting for? Or do, are you have you gone with the extremely literal version of, I am not the incumbent, so I am by default a vote for change? A little bit of that. <laughs> Uh, it's everything. Uh, first of all, um, we're, we are immigrants. Uh, well, I am immigrant and uh, I think it's very important now to have representation for uh, also the woman in, in the city. Uh, right now, there is only two women sitting on council when the population of the city is not represented, right? Like it's not just a 10% of the city that is woman. There is just one uh, person of color in city council. I don't think less than the one percent is uh, is people of color or immigrants. I I I don't think that the current city council is representing Edmonton, so I think that needs to change. So it's a lot of little changes. More women in city council, more people of color, um, diversity. So then for that we need to vote for change. Uh, vote a little bit uh, outside of the box, but 
check mark the box. But in yeah. the box, yeah. Exactly. Outside the box, in the box. <laughs> so in a sense, your slogan could not kind of be condensed to just like vote out Whitey. Am I am I reading that correctly? <laughs> no, there are good <laughs> candidates that it doesn't matter race it just needs representation matters i think uh, mm. it does, it's not just about color of skin it's about uh ideologies backgrounds professions even professions yeah exactly Experience. so yeah age. yeah because i mean age, just looking yeah. at uh looking at this uh website i have for the the heated race in your ward um it does say that tim Carmel is a small business owner and professional engineer and i mean I think we can all agree those are two jobs that have been vastly underrepresented in politics. I've, I can't think of another business owner who's ever gone on to hold office. So that could be groundbreaking, I think. Mm -hmm. Again, I will not be researching this. Mm. I think you're spending too much of your 10% in, in some of the uh, little uh, details. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it is more about a little bit of everything. Uh, we need engineers. We need even moms, right? Like uh, running uh, like moms that are now decide to run. Why not? Like if they can run a household, they can do everything. They can uh, manage to the laundry that is never ending <laughs> and their kids and groceries and all of that. And they still be cheerful and happy. I think that's already like, already uh, a good background to be in city council. Uh, right now, I have to juggle my life as an adult, a full-time job, a full-time campaign, and just survive through COVID. So if we can do all of this, it's already a big, uh, good um, reference that, they can, that we can juggle whatever city council throws at us. Yeah, um, that's, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest, I have lost my train of thought. So Paige, if you did want to bail me out here, now would be a great time. <laughs> Bailing him out. I do agree. Yeah. Um, uh, like the, the, sorry, the mothers uh, running for, for councils and positions and have like already taking uh, con like control of their household or sorry, control is a, maybe a harsh word for that, but like you know, having ownership. over ownership. Yeah. Yeah. Got ducks in a row in their household. They got, they can get ducks in a row anywhere else. Yeah. It feels like, but uh, I do have uh, another sincere question for you is um, I was wondering what, if you could choose um, one thing for all of Edmonton to agree on, um, what would that be? And feel free to take a little time to think about it. But if there was, you know, one thing, if it's like maybe something really small, like. Um, and if you do need time to think about it, you can just discreetly tap the side of your head and we will hit that technical <laughs> difficulty screen and that will buy you, I don't know, I think somewhere around like three minutes to come up with an answer. I think, I, I think the biggest thing, uh, and not only Edmonton, I think World Wild will be like, why we need to choose sides, like sides of things? Like we we shouldn't be that divided. I think I, I one of the things that I sometimes always keep saying in Twitter and my emails is like be kind to each other. Like let's just stop attacking if about race. I think I, I will just and like racism and let's just see beyond color of the skin and languages or borders or anything like that and instead attacking each other just because we believe different things i think we just need to be more accept uh to, towards others and other ideologies regardless what it is sometimes it is hard but we don't have to be mad or aggressive to the other person uh i think you get more wind honey with with vinegar i think is the saying right more that is than with vinegar yeah yeah, that is true. That is the saying. It is a fun fact that you will actually, in real life, attract uh, more flies with vinegar than with honey. But I do agree with the spirit of what you're saying, which is that, you know, we are, like, maybe a lot of our division is in a way, like, it's kind of inauthentic in that 
I mean, if if you want my opinion on it, I think uh, the you know the the steady social media diets that are like funneling us each are very different specific stream of information that is kind of tailored to make us angry because that drives more engagement has made us I would say kind of like artificially angry like we're being like pushed to the angry space every time an issue comes up and there's not really any kind of room for discussion or reconciliation in that like I don't know if you would agree with that yes like um I think conversation is always welcome and as long as it's respectful and in uh, understandable way of on uh, yeah understanding that the different people might have different point of view but without attacking i think when it becomes like personal and even in politics is like i know pol the polemy or polemic subjects or controversial themes may draw more attention to you but do you really want to play that game uh, i i think people now with uh internet information is out there so if people want to find the dirty clothes under the rug or in the bed the monsters under the bed again uh, yeah. <laughs> you can find them uh but i think people is just tired of that and especially to kobe would need just so much peace of mind peace in our hearts and and be able to go go to sleep uh with a with um no guilty no, re no remorse guilt. because yeah. now we don't know if we will wake up the next day now that the health system is collapsed so hopefully everything is healthy everybody everybody, everybody. so like going to sleep with a clean conscience and clean yes. shoes right i think i mean i honestly and i think clean that could... sheets. yeah i mean like clean conscience clean shoes clean sheets that that's my campaign slogan that's my fourth example of a campaign slogan and I'm taking that one and none of you can take it. So, you know, it's been said here. I will remember it uh, in three years and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly it. I do want you to remind me to register in the election and remind me also my slogans were because I will forget, but at the same time, don't steal them. Does that kind of like, does that kind of work? It, it it kind of works because uh, you're you're running for uh, trustee, so I will remember to trust you. Oh yeah, I did say I was running for trustee. That does feel like I'm kind of swinging low. Now that I've seen that, I mean, in this election, there's there's some wards of people running unopposed. I feel like, I mean, I I have a look at you know. Let's just take a random example, Tim Cartmel here, and I mean, here's something I think we can agree on. Uh, I mean. To me, he kind of does look like a huge nerd. And I don't think there's any doubt that in terms of representation, huge nerds have been overrepresented in politics. And maybe that's something that needs to change. I would like to uh, take a quick second to say that I look like a huge nerd. And so I uh, resemble and resent that comment. That's what I want to say. And I will, I will grovelingly apologize to you after the show, but not during it. Okay, I accept. I think if we all use glasses, we look like nerds. Nice. Which is exactly why I don't wear them and why I bump into a lot of stop signs. But you know what? At least I don't look silly, isn't it? You know? Yeah, oh, you don't look silly at all bumping into stop signs. I agree. Mm -hmm. No, it, it just means like, you know, I am independent. I am ungovernable. I will not let the government signs to tell me what to do. You know, even what? when I hit them, I don't stop. I keep, I just kind of deflect to the side oh, and okay. keep walking yeah. and play it off like I meant to because I'm, I'm playing chicken with the sign, right? If I stop walking, then the sign wins. You know, if right. I change my path, the sign wins, the government wins, and everyone is sheep. And I've again lost my train of thought. Amazing. This is what I'm here for, is to derail you so I can entirely rerail somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And where would you like to rerail, Paige? <laughs> where? Um, you know, I'm not really to so sure. I uh, haven't got that far quite yet. Um, but to go back a little bit to the question that I asked about, like, the one thing for all of Edmonton to agree on, um, Gisela, your answer um, was, like, involving race and, like, 
giving each other maybe the benefit of the doubt and like something for all of Edmonton to agree on maybe um, in a way would be for uh, them to understand that everyone's going through things and has different uh, experience and to remember that when when opposing or um, when what was it arguments flare up or opposing views happen uh, yeah does that uh, sound like kind of what you wanted to hit on yes I I, I I went to a summer camp uh, in Los Angeles when I was eight and then I went to an exchange to, uh, program with Rotary when I was 16 to Germany and one thing that I have said uh, since then is that if every young kid will have the opportunity to experience another culture, there will be no war because then you become more empathetic of where people come from, how they're raised, how's the culture, why they do what they do. And, and then you you are a little bit more open open on, oh, they're different, but they don't mean bad or that's just how they is. And then you you become a little more understandable of the difference and not just scared of the difference. Right. Yeah, I do. I do kind of. Sorry, go ahead, Paige. Oh, um, I was just going to say that's very insightful. And like you're definitely, uh, Gisela, you're definitely no uh, stranger to culture so shock because it sounds like, you know, you've been many, many places uh, among the the few that I can remember, uh, well, you just said Germany and America and then uh, France you were in and then now you're in Canada and there's maybe even more between. So that's, that's a lot of culture to experience in a life. Tell me about uh, the first time that I was uh, walking wide up and then suddenly like my, it was minus something, the winter temperatures <laughs> in Edmonton. <laughs> uh, and then my eyes started like, kind of shutting and I, I like I, my eyesight start to be like smaller and smaller and I was like what's happening to me <laughs> uh and they're like oh my god don't worry your eyelashes are freezing together so don't try to open your eyes because they will break and you will not have eyelashes and I'm like what's this <laughs> happening to me uh it's it, it's normal it happens here all the time and it's like if if anybody thought that hell is all fire and is like flames everywhere, they have never been in Edmonton when it's minus 40. That's true. And I think people also underestimate the amount of just kind of like concrete and uh, empty parking lots in hell as well. We have that too. I mean, concrete does get quite hot in the summer, I feel like. So that could be part of of the the hot hot hell that people are, are thinking about. That is true. That isn't the main thing I find to be a bummer about endless expanses of concrete, but it is It is true that it does tend to uh, like absorb the temperature of the season pretty well. Mm. Um, so I, I do actually like, I really agree with what uh, you were saying there, Grisella, about the, the potential of, you know, as you say, the, the just visiting someone else's country does, in my experience, a ton to kind of just humanize people. And I think most people I've met that that have like an affinity for visiting other places and experiencing other cultures do tend to be of that broadly, maybe a little more collaborative mindset. And yeah, optimistically, I think I would agree that if, if we could kind of just give everyone that transformative experience of like, this is what it's like to just see someone else in their element and see that people are just people everywhere and they're having the exact same arguments and the exact same problems. Um, but there's a bit of a paradox to it too in that like global travel has, you know, at least, you know, two years ago, it was never more accessible. It's, there's flights everywhere and it's cheap, but the, the kind of, double-edged sword of that is that everyone's kind of cavalier use of planes from, in my opinion, is, you know, it's just another one of those contributing factors to the climate change. We're seeing this kind of breaking up, like, the the stability of that world and the, 
you know, the peacefulness that we do have in it. And as we saw more recently, it also enabled the very quick spread of a virus everywhere. So it's kind of it's kind of an interesting thought experiment to me is like, how, how else can you get to experience other people and their cultures without, you know, finding a way to get 8 billion people to make a flight every two years so that they can all have this nice little travelers experience. I don't know if that makes any sense. Well, I think uh, Canada is a little bit um, gift on that side, on that side, because maybe you don't have to go across the border to experience other cultures. Your neighbors might be another culture. And if you're open to experience that, to know them, you have it there. You don't have to travel across the border. Uh, and I agree that um, the traveling, the car industry or the plane industry, all the gas industry is collaborating to our climate uh, crisis. Uh, but at the same time, if we're more empathetic with what's happening on Brazil with uh, the uh, jungle on fire and the ocean in Mexico on fire and everything on fire and the <laughs> overflow uh, in Germany, we can empathize more because I, I have fun here like uh, we are lucky to have water everywhere there's lakes everywhere so then uh like people brush their teeth with the tap open or they run their shower for like five minutes before jumping in and it's like what are you doing we're running out of water just thousand kilometers down the south south of the border there are cities in the in the u.s they already have limited water supplies but because we sometimes just see what's happening around us, we forget to empathize with what's happening in other countries. So it is a double sword, I guess, but we do still need to be more open-minded of what's going on behind our backyard. Yeah, absolutely. That is a question I kind of, um, we don't have a ton of time, but I would like to get some of your input on is, uh, I, I would hope that you agree that Really, the, the the biggest issue that faces us probably at any level of politics going forward is the climate crisis. It's kind of continually amazing to me how comparatively little airtime it gets to a lot of, you know, to every other issue essentially. Um, when it's it's so vital to our ability to continue to have anything nice, really. So I'm I'm curious how that factors into your beliefs, your politics, your platform of what can we do at the local level as citizens? What do you want to do as a candidate looking at the just continued degradation of our ecosystems everywhere? Yeah, um, it, it will depend who you ask. Like if we ask other candidates in convince, they might say that people don't believe in climate crisis and climate change is not a thing. Uh, and uh, the Edmonton admission is not big enough to cause any damage or being impactful. Um, I totally disagree. Uh, I, I start, I always try to lead by example. And I think that's why I'm also in this adventure because it's like, well, I, at least I can open the door for other Latinas or Mexicans or Colombians or people of color or woman or whoever decides to run, just try it, give it a try open the doors that way, but um, climate change is very important to me. It's very close to my heart. Um, as I say, like it, there's cities in Mexico and in the US that already have like limited water supply. They have water from seven in the morning to 10 in the morning and then figure it out. So that's why they collect the water for those hours so they can wash the dishes and shower and wash their hands and flush the toilet. Uh, and these are big cities, like Mexico City has this problem and is like one of the biggest cities in the world. So then I think every city can make uh, actions, take actions towards helping the war crisis. And again, it goes back again to empathize. just because we're not directly seeing it doesn't mean that it's not happening, but actually we are already seeing it, like the wildfires. We're beginning of October and we still have wildfires. Um, then uh, the draw season, like it was so dry this season and the agriculture in our country, like in, in Alberta and BC was so much, so affected. And at the same time we had the wildfires, we, there was no rain and all of that. It is part of the climate change already. So we need to action right now. Don't wait for hell to be rain on us to, to take actions. 
Yeah, I, I definitely think that, I mean, what I find kind of still disheartening is you, you can see something as plain as day as just the completely like unprecedented July we had with the amount of smoke, the amount of heat, and to a certain amount of people, they are happy to continue saying, well, this is just uh, a, a random phenomenon, or this is just the climate changing naturally. And, and you know, there, there's, all, there's always that deflection. And it's been interesting to see how, I think for the past 20 years or so, a lot of really, really common attitudes towards the climate have been, oh, like you can't produce, the fu you can't predict the future. You can't be a, such a doomsayer about it. And well, we're gonna find a way if it is a problem to figure it out. And then when you come to today, you can you can now say, I'm not predicting the future. I can point to you something happening in front of me right now. And they say, well, like I still am just shocked at the lack of urgency people around me. They just kind of, oh, it's, it's smoky today or, you know, on some other occasions, they're, you know, in a, a winter day that's too warm, you know, they're not dying of heat stroke, but they're, the, you know, you also have radio hosts going, wow, it sure is a nice week here in January. And you kind of wait for them to get to the next step. Like, isn't that concerning to you? I don't know. I don't know if that's, that's uh, too rambly to comment on, but. Yeah, like it's, it's small actions. Like uh, we were talking uh before on parking lots uh, and, and even the streets, uh, there is um, an image in Google that if you search for it, there is like one street and the degrees without trees, without any um, ecosystem to it. And it's just concrete and cars. And then they take te the temperature of the street, of the cars and everything. And it's like 30, 40, 50 degrees, depending of the area of the cut of the world. Um, but then you have a, 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 a street that has trees on it. And, and then the temperature also lowest from the concrete is lowest from the cars because the trees shade gives some shade. Also the wind, uh, the trees, uh, we have seen more um, water flow, uh, no, overflows. Uh, and it's because of the trees. The trees work as a um, sponge, I, I guess, that they absorb the water from the roots uh, they also stop the wind so that hurricanes don't go so bad into the country or in those but if we're cutting all of the trees all of the forest then we're starting to see all of this catastrophes happening all around the world and it's us that we're causing it and it's i think it's just little changes uh for my campaign we didn't print uh lawn signs uh and we didn't give brochures uh or anything paper plain the only paper that we had was uh, the business cards, they are 100% compostable. They have seeds on them. Um, so then you can plant them, reuse them uh, or anything like that. So we tried to keep our footprint as small as, small as we could. Uh, and maybe it will affect us at, us at, at the end because our name is not everywhere, is not in every corner, but we were trying something different. And if we don't try, we will still be doing the same things over and over. And that's the definition of madness. Keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Yeah, just going back a step, did you say you made no lawn signs? I no really lawn like signs. That. I so, think that's super awesome. My follow up question is Is it too late for me to move into your ward so that I can vote for you possibly twice? I have an empty room. <laughs> if you want to be my room <laughs> for the next couple weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Let's make this happen because I, I've, I, like, I think my politics have maybe shifted over time. My kind of like, my values have evolved and all these things. But ever since I was like, probably as young as I can remember, I have hated lawn signs with a passion. And um, I'm wondering if you would even take it a step further in your um, campaign platform. Do you want to kind of just go out with me at night and just start setting fire to all the other lawn signs that are out there? Those will be ha uh, fire hazard. And right now we're in the middle of the wildfires, so I don't think that will be a good idea. Uh, but uh, it is interesting because uh, it is well known now that the millennial vote or people under 40 is the ones driving the vote and and, and the ones that are more concerned about social issues like the climate change, racism, Islamophobia, all of those social issues that is affecting our society right now is the millennium people that is more involved 
the only thing is that we're also disappointed in politics so we don't go out and and, and vote uh and that's very important because we are actually the ones that are actioning on it and and believing in it and for so long we have been hating lawn signs but that's how politics is run how that's how campaigns are run so we the uh, the things keep doing the same but then if we millennials start pushing for the change it happens um so we just need to get together and organize our voices and agree on something and go for it um uh, it, it has been seen uh in many many elections and once the millennium vote is out there they define the election so i'm hoping to count on the millennium vote for this election yeah i couldn't agree more and uh I, I, I agree with what you're saying about the like the generational difference because it's never been easier to get information about your candidates digitally. I mean, I can go look online to see any number of websites breaking down all of the candidates in my award. You know, I can go look at your Twitter page. I can go on Tim Cartmel's Facebook page. I can really suss out just how sketchy this guy is. And I you know, like what, what, yeah, what are we still doing with these archaic approaches? And uh, yeah, I mean, I can only hope that uh, if you do win, you'll, uh, you'll pass a, maybe introduce a bill in city or a motion to city council to, to ban lawn signs. I'll be happy to write it for you. I'll be happy to hand deliver it. I'll be happy to stand behind you during the press conference and nod a lot, like anything you need, let's make this happen. I think that I, I I will totally be on board of like limited the printing and our footprint and and if you think about it it's crazy because there's wars that have ten candidates so that means each candidate have a lawn sign there's twenty thousand house like in my ward there's twenty thousand houses so that means there will be twenty thousand lawn signs if every house gets one and and that that's just one ward and then different candidates different. Then one for mayor, one for council, one for trustee, one for support the library, one for uh, support the teachers. So then it's like, this all ends up in our garbage landfills. Like, it's crazy. Like, it, it, when I think about it, I try not to think too much about it because it actually upsets me that it's like, we are causing so much garbage that is not going anywhere. So I see this futuristic movie where the we start shooting the garbage to space because we don't have more space for it. Yeah, but as uh, the other dude, I'm for blanking on his name, but Mr. Car Cardmel would uh, uh, allegedly like to do is maybe want to also burn all of that garbage he's making in the uh, nuclear uh, or plants. melt it in the nuclear. Yeah, yeah, maybe melt it in the nuclear waste that he's making and, and boarding up with orphans, allegedly. But anyway, um, Gisela, I would also like to maybe even suggest another, uh, and this is of course all up to you, your campaign, your or your uh, your choices. I have a, a little slogan here that I'd like to to put up on. And see what you like, or see what uh, see how you feel about it. Yay! <laughs> that will be my next my next <laughs> sign. So. Uh, for this week, we're doing, uh, we're setting waving operation, I call them, at uh, intersection, main intersections in the world. So pretty much is uh, me, some friends, some supporters, just trying to stay warm <laughs> while we are outside, just waving at cars. Um, most of them way back, or some of them, they hung their taxons and, and things like that. So then we have homemade signs and some of them say vote for change and some of them just say my name. So I think the next one will be uh, lawn uh, signs lacking platform packing. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I appreciate the, the positive response on that one because I, like I said before in a, a little quick um, uh, moment, I really do appreciate um, uh, the the lack of signs it's it's a it's a change and it's a really good change i think which uh which is what you promise so yeah thank you yeah and on uh on this happy note i think we're about due to uh to pull in our our gm of the night for our game 
and um, I'm not sure how this usually goes. This is how it usually goes. Guisa, have you met Ted? Nice to meet you, Ted. <laughs> hello. 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 How's everybody? Um, I mean, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I feel like we've already bared our souls to you for the past hour there <laughs> hiding behind the curtain. So I don't know what it's else to true. tell you. It's true. We're all we're all doing better than Tim is right now after being dunked on for the past 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, you just wait till see how the next hour goes. <laughs> Uh, yes, our main villain will be Tim. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, how about uh, do some do some little character introductions? Let's, who's who's going to be playing who? Let's let's do a little recap. We'll we'll talk about what's going on here. Right. Yeah. Well, so, uh, Ted, what's your uh, understanding of the premise of our story so far? Uh, my my vague understanding of the story as it stands so far, as it's been handed over to me, is uh, you are a team of former pizza shop employees uh, turned uh, amateur level Ghostbusters uh, after what some would be con considered, what some people would consider a semi successful uh, excursion in uh, your first Ghostbusting attempt moving a uh, ghost that was haunting a toilet uh, to now hunting an ice cream freezer. So, you know, uh, change in life. And uh, that, that's my understanding so far. But uh, let me know if I've got anything wrong. I think you nailed it. Sounds super accurate. Sounds like exactly how I relate it to you. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess uh, maybe I'll start then. Um, I the the character that I retrieved from the depths of the YouTube channel, uh, born under Punch's channel, is Junkie Trevor. Uh, they them pronouns for Junkie Trevor, please and thank you. Uh, they look like uh, a slight a slight figure with uh, multiple hats on or multiple visor hats the ones without the top part just the two visors one act or like kind of like a, a florida sort of deer stalker like a front and a back visor and uh their special talent is that they're very handy at fixing things that's where the junkie uh title came from oh like as like working in a junkyard not being addicted to smack uh <laughs> <laughs> yes, more so the that first one, the former, okay. please. Uh, uh, and uh, okay. other special talents, uh, flexible and bouncy. Oh. That is Junkie Trevor. All right. All right, my next? Yeah. Yep. All right, this is going to be a wonderful comeuppance because uh, as much as I gave Paige a hard time for losing her character sheet in the... <laughs> Two months or so since we uh, last visited this uh, wonderful, fantastical world of Vermilion, uh, I uh, have re suddenly remembered that I have my sheet in front of me and I cannot remember exactly how I did my character's voice. So, uh, yeah, this will be a learning on our feed experience. But uh, my character's name is Longfellow Sandwich. He's waifish and pale. He's known as Dagwood to his friends, which is none of his co-workers at the pizza shop. Uh, he's a descendant of the famed Earl of Sandwich. His family was ushered out of the UK after being part of the hit they, the royal family laid on Princess Diana. And uh, now estranged from his family, he's been locked out of his inheritance and is uh, trying to make his own way out here in Vermilion as a pizza man turns ghost hunter. All right, how about you, uh, Gisela? Um, My name is Crella Maria. Uh, I'm 30, uh, some kind of like a mix of Eva Longoria, Salma Hayek, Sofia Vergara in a five feet 
four. Um, so um, my first marriage was uh, 17. And now I think I fall into the pizza place, Ghostbusters thing, because I think my ex-husband's ghost, the many ones, are, are, are scaring my Tinder dates away. So it's like a <laughs> black widow, black widow kind of thing here. I, I have my personification ready. Amazing. Costume change. Oh, oh you have a costume. Oh, this, oh, is, this is great. I do Very not good. have visors. Dang it. Uh, quick question. Did you murder these husbands or is that not for us to know? I cannot accept or deny anything. I play the fifth. Ah. All, all we know is they were killed in a terrible passion and became ghosts. Very, very unfortunate accidents. All right. Okay, um, so wait, so you're a customer at our business, not an, not an employee? Correct. All right. All right. Um, well, uh, so... Sorry, and real quick, did your character, uh, Grisella, have a, uh, a unique talent that you picked? Yes. Amazing cocktail mix. Oh, Ooh, nothing related to the days of my husband's. Nothing related. <laughs> mm. All right, and uh, I mine, which I now have learned. I need to clarify. Uh, I have an extremely superhuman schmoozing capacity, uh, which means that uh, whenever I'm trying to charm somebody who considers himself high status, I'm really good at sucking up to them. So hopefully that comes in handy today. Well, hopefully. Um, well, I I think I think since uh, there's we've got a customer here, uh, we should uh, lead things off here at the uh, pizza shop uh, slash Ghostbusters headquarters. Um, All right, Chriselle, so I want to put your character's name in here. What's your what's your character's full name? Cruella Maria. So like Cruella, like the Disney character. Correct. All right. Like that? Perfect. Cool. All right. Sorry, Ted. Go ahead. That's all good. Uh, so, uh, Cruella, you find yourself uh, outside the pizza shop slash Ghostbustering headquarters. Uh, I'm, I don't do. Have you guys got a sign up yet? I do believe. Pizza? Yeah, I do believe last, uh, last time we were here, actually, that Junkie Trevor uh, made a sort of, you know, collage, letter collage sign, a sort of um, serial like killer-esque. Other signs, yeah. like, like yeah. of magazine books, it was like a church sign. Uh, oh, uh, it could be a sign. Like I was thinking letters. like, yeah, front cover letters, like the bigger letters, of course. Uh, and that's just kind of like ramshackle put together. Yeah, and it has our company name on it, like so, you see on the screen. Ah. Raytheon. Yeah, Raytheon. All right, so uh, yes, yeah, so if you're outside of the Raytheon slash pizza headquarters, you see this spectacular junkie-based sign that Junkie Trevor's made up. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, are you going to head straight in? Uh, effectively, you get to take it from here. You are the customer. I think I, I, I need to get this figured out because I need to find my next victim husband. So, so and they're looking, scaring. They're, they're being scaring right away. Now? Okay, so you need you need to get the ghost stopped so you can find a new victim to make more ghosts. Husband, husband. Let's call husband. A new. Okay, okay. So you need to scare away your current ex husband's ghost to get a new husband to possibly later become an ex husband, possibly even a ghost. Yeah, maybe. Let's go with that. All right, all right. Well, uh, here you are at the at the place place to be, uh, Junkie Trevor Longfellow. Where where are you guys inside? I'm gonna be in the back, like where the make like pizza making happened, but I'm yeah. gonna be like banging around, clang clang banging, moving stuff, making things. All right. Uh, I'm at the side window, which uh, we've recently cleaned and. Now I realize that there's a view outside of this window, and I have been trying to find whatever's laying around the shop so I can jury rig some sort of like 
you know, poor man's binoculars or something so I can spy on our neighbor across the street with huge cans. <laughs> All right, Cruella, this is, uh, this is what you see before you as you enter their shop. Uh, and I'll, I'll pass it over to you guys to have your first interaction. I suppose you'd be uh, in see Longfellow first and hear Junkie Trevor in the back. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll let you, let you say something to them or... If you're not comfortable with using your own character's voice, you can narrate it for the time being. Feel free to. Okay. Oh my god. I need some help. I hope you guys can help me. Uh, I need to get rid of some ghosts. So, somebody told me that this is a place. Can somebody help me, please? So, before I decide if I'm turning around from this window, uh, I'm wondering, Ted, if you can tell me whether or not I've like, what am I seeing out the window? Is the neighbor there? Is she in her yard? Is she, is she in her yoga outfit? Uh, well, I've, I've got a map of Vermilion up on my screen here. And uh, the first pizza place I saw was this uh, Boston pizza. So uh, you're, you're, you're actually viewing straight into the uh, Masterpiece Therapies, Inc., the Art of Physio. Um, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it's about... It's about eleven o'clock, so th there's a there's a there's a pre lunch crowd in the the physio studio. Uh, one one of your your favorite trainer. Uh, you you got to get that pre lunch physio in. It, your favorite trainer is working in the usual spot by the window, um, uh, dressed professionally for the job she has. Uh, whether you're ogling her uh, or not, uh, I will I will leave that to you. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna continue staring at the window, and I'm kind of like motion behind me. Towards person come in and be like, hey, yeah, that's that's us. We'll we'll help, but I say that in the correct voice of my character. <laughs> All right. Um, I hear so a commotion between my bangings and uh, realize that there is somebody out front and come running out front and be like, oh, hello, hello, uh, welcome to Raytheon uh, Incorpor Incorporated. Not sure about that one. Um, welcome. What? May we help you with, uh, dear customer? Okay, so I have to confess that some of my ex-husbands that I didn't murder, of course, that was just a bad coincidence that all of them happened of the same reason, but it was not me. Um, but now they're hunting me and they're blocking me from getting my next husband and I know, like, Vermilion doesn't have the best Tinder dates ever, so being all of them scared, I'm already running low on numbers, so I need some help, urgent help. Urgent help. We can do that for you, Miss, uh, or Mr., um, I'm sorry, what is your name? Cruella. Cruella Maria. Cruella, Cruella Maria. We are here for you and your ghost needs at Raytheon. Uh, let me consult my partner. Um, hey, Longfellow. And I grab his shoulder and kind of like jiggle, jiggle. Yeah, I wheel around to have a peek. And uh, for, first thing I'm going to check for is, uh, does, does this new person in our store have huge cans? Uh, Cruella, do you have huge cans? I only drink a pumpkin spice latte tall. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's the best possible answer that we So she have. comes in holding a pumpkin spice latte and uh and the the reality is that I am a huge sucker for um a woman with a pumpkin spice latte so like my pupils turn into like little hearts but I try to like blink it off so no one notices. And uh I, I clear my throat because there was something in my throat before, and I go, <clears throat> "Oh yeah, lady, we'll we'll help you with whatever, whatever you need." Sorry, sorry, there was there was something in my throat before. This sounds suspiciously like <laughs> angina. <laughs> no, no, no! I... <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna do it. <laughs> oh no, I don't have an, I don't have any heart conditions. I just you know sometimes when I don't talk for a while, I. My uh, my throat gets all funny, but yeah, this is uh, this is how I sound. This is how I've always sounded. Jeez, long how are you doing? How long, how long were you at that window for? Let me tell you, Trevor. 
I'm just going to say this. It's been a long time. And okay. I mean that in many ways. Well, we know <laughs> we know that uh, Cruella here needs our help, Longfellow. Uh, there's a ghost problem. They've been haunting this poor lady. And uh, she hasn't been able to get a date, as far as I can tell. And he hearing that part especially, uh, yeah, my ears perk up and I kind of clear my throat again. <clears throat> oh, yeah, 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 we can help you. Yeah, that's for sure. We're just... Uh, we're just a couple of uh, people helping folks, and uh, well, don't worry, we'll take care of it. You just follow us. Uh, why don't Why don't you step into the office and check out the paperwork? We have paperwork. Uh, as As he begins rambling on, uh, you can hear Cruella. Your uh, Your Tinder notification actually goes off. Um, so uh, you look You look down, and uh, you You have been. Uh, Tinder matched with a man whose name is going to be revealed. Or, no, oh, not a man. No. Um, you have been matched with Sarah Salvador. Ted, are you just looking at your Tinder right now to get names for these matches? <laughs> no, I got, I got, I got. Oh wow! NPC cards. Look at That's that. so fucking fancy. Holy shit! Oh, Prepared. Yeah, I, got, I got in insight cards just in case you guys need you know promos oh for stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, I got. God. I thought I was prepared because I brought dice. Like, oh my, <laughs> getting shown uh, up here. Yeah, yeah. So you you have matched you have matched with uh, Sarah Salvador, uh, and uh, by their profile, uh, you can see that they're somewhat squat in their looking. Uh, good jaw, good strong jawline. Um, but you do notice that they're slightly transparent, perhaps in their in their photos. Um, so that that's who you've just matched with. So do with that information what you will. Do we have any insight on their bank account? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, um, well, looking through their pictures, uh, you can you can tell that uh, Sarah Salvador definitely works with their hands. Um, so at first, at first, your your initial thought may be, "Oh, they're just manual labor." But then you start to realize, in the background of every single one of their pictures, everything's perfectly maintained. the The grain in the wood on their staircase all follows the same line. Uh, you see any in the background. You see a few pictures with the with their outlets and light switches, and all the uh, the uh, nuts and screws are all perfectly aligned. Everything is 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 immaculate in detail. And and you you've you've had a few husbands, so you know you know how much good home renovations cost. So you know that this person is either rich in skill, or rich in uh, in wealth, and knows who to hire. I sidle over and I kind of like peer at the phone over her shoulder and I go, "Oh yeah, you know, <clears throat> oh yeah, you know what? Those uh, those look like show homes to me. That's all Instagram fakery, you know. It's just I bet you, I bet you they were in that place once and got kicked out for taking selfies. And then I like walk off to go drink water because trying to make my voice low hurts like a lot. <laughs> Uh, Junkie Trevor, do you have any anything to add to this? Oh yeah, well, okay. So I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself. I'm, I'm rubbing my chin to myself, sort of, and then think of something like, "Hey, Cruella, uh, you think we should maybe lure these ghosts so, so we could, you know, see them, see them at work. You can get them all in one spot again. Maybe we can, you know, nab them or something. So, like a date? Do they all show up on a date? They all show up at my house. How do they? Oh. Well, it was formerly their house. So how do you kick a toes from their house? But it's now my house. Mm. So that's that's the thing. You're the experts. R right. Yes. Yes. So I I grab the paperwork from the office and say, Oh, we'll do this on the <clears throat> we'll we'll do this on the way, ma'am. Let's all just uh let's all just pile into the ghost van and let's get going. Why why don't why don't you sit up front and I like open the front door for her. Like a huge nerd. And I go run around to the driver's seat really quickly while he's opening the door. <laughs> 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 I 
I'm just grabbing my pumpkin spice latte and let me <laughs> wonder right. flow into the car. Uh, as I see Junkie Trevor go and try to steal the um, the driver's seat Successfully once it's seen. open. Well, I'm gonna I want to open the passenger door, <laughs> but then run around the car and try to like you know like two like teenage brothers trying to vie for the shotgun seat. I want to try and like push Junkie Trevor out of the way so that I can get into the driver's seat. All right, let's have a let's have a little uh, quick let's, let's let's get some dice rolled here real quick. Keep in mind that I my special one of my special talents is that I'm bouncy. Yeah. One of your special yeah. talents. How many do you have? Flexible, bouncy, and handy. I don't know if that's allowed. All right. Well, it I was... only wrote down handy, so we'll see how it plays out. <laughs> Frick. <laughs> um, well, uh, simple contest of strength. Uh, D6 versus D6. Uh, use your body modifier. Oh, just what? Were you just rolling one? Yeah, you just uh, yeah, roll two. You're rolling against each other. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Four with the with the modifier. Four with the modifier. Two yeah. dice rolls. Two dice rolls. What? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, you get, I'm still trying to remember these rolls. Yeah, two dice rolls. Plus, it's still four. Just roll the other one. No, nine. Uh, ten. It's ten. Sorry. It's ten. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hold on. There's still hope. <laughs> no. Just the five. I win. <laughs> uh, Longfellow, you're sitting in the back. Oh um, man. Yeah, uh, Junk Trevor, tell me how you get Longfellow uh, off off that seat there. What, what, how does this altercation happen? Well, since I'm so bouncy, I um, I ricochet myself off of Longfellow. I actually just run into him and use the trajectory to bounce into the seat and close the door, catching his sleeve. So I have I to reopen the door and then get him to yeah. get in the back. Uh, and dur during this altercation there, Cruella, you uh, you get a follow-up text uh, from uh, your transparent Tinder uh, person. It's just an opening text. It's, uh, it's hey, with a little ghost emoticon. Well, Spooky. we don't discriminate in here as long as the bank account has a couple zeros on it. So I'm just going to respond um, and say... Um, when can we meet? I have never even done Tinder, so I don't know how this works. <laughs> Getting it done. Getting it done right away. Yeah, you know I mean, what you want, Kamala. So this where, is great. Where, where, where do we meet? And so I'm trying to, like, um, arrange, like, the next day because, well, we all know that somebody needs to pay the bills, so we need a new husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, you start driving along. Everybody's in the van. You, you're starting your little conversation with uh, with this person here. Junkie Trevor's got a heavy foot. I'm in the back uh, commenting on the number of zeros in my bank account, but I'm definitely <laughs> including the ones after the decimal point. There's millions after the decimal point. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I got, <clears throat> I got, oh, yeah. That's at least six zeros here. But, like, he's definitely looking at the fact that he has, like, two different accounts and they both say 0, 0.00. So... But I'm he's not lying, lying, is he? He's not li Technically, he's not lying. Um, uh, just as you guys begin to uh, pull up to the house, uh, Corella, you get a, a follow-up text from uh, Sarah that says, your haunt or mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think she's now this into something. This guy's got slogans. So um, this is starting to worry me because I'm starting to think that my ex-husband had hijacked or like virus my Tinder app, and now they have something going on there. Now they are teaming up against me. Can uh, does Junkie Trevor notice anything? Is there like because I'm in the front seat with Cruella, so do I? Do I notice uh, her like realizing something's wrong when she's on her phone? I show uh, you. You're, are you going to show me? Yeah, it's like something is up. Something is okay. up. Oh, just a little I... like table talk here. But did did um, Corella and Maria go from like getting a match notification on Tinder to meeting up at their house in like ten minutes or so? Is that kind of? They they they've been very forward. 
cool. Griselli, you want to just give me some lessons after the show? We'll just we'll talk about it later, but you will ask to curl you will have to ask to curl Maria. She's the expert. Mm. Yeah. No okay. Sure. Okay. So I see I guess I see the whole the all the whole message and and see the little mini profile, whatever you show me, Cruella. Yeah, it's it's starting to be concerning. I think my husbands have already uh, infiltrated into my phone. You see what I'm dealing with? You see? This is urgent. We need to this, get them out of here. I mean, it seems like it's pretty urgent. You're meeting up fairly soon. That's, that's, I mean, you are a lady who knows what she wants. I can see that now. Um, but what's concerning you? What are you? I see that they're talking like haunt and a ghost emoji. Is that, is that your concern? Well, I cannot deal myself with them. Like, what if I broke a nail? Like, right. I cannot do that. Mm. I need help. Right. While they're doing this, I go like around the house, just kind of sneaking off to see if any of the any of the house's windows open from the outside. Um. So as you're going and starting to check check the windows, um you know first no no success on on the easily accessible windows but you can see there's, there's a couple of those like little skinny uh transom windows above stuff that you know nobody ever remembers to lock you're not going to go get a chair to lock your window every night it, you know one, one of them you see open it, it's quite quite narrow though it's only about eight inches Ooh. well i am Wayfish. So, am I wayfish enough to fit through this window? Uh, well, you know, I think I think we can roll to find roll roll to check wayfishness. Wayfishness. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is this uh, is this the body wayfish. roll? I think it's a body <laughs> roll to see if you can fit through this window, and I'm really excited for this. Okay. So now I got I got an important question here because my body is minus one because I'm so wayfish, but do I get like a plus one because I'm trying to use my weakness to my advantage? Yes, yes. In this in this case, I, I would absolutely allow your plus one or your minus one to be magically transformed into a plus one. So Hell would yeah. the, this like negative be turned into like positive? Would the low number, lower number be the positive or in in this in a situation where it would be advantageous to be wayfish or light, yes, I I, w I will allow a lower number to be better in your consideration it, because you've made that an aspect of your character okay but so i'm going to be minus a, one but i want a low number yeah if if that's what you're going for but i'm not going to make it like i don't want i don't want skinny people to just be able to jam themselves through doorways easier that seems unfair all right well you tell me what i'm rolling and what my modifier is going to be uh you're rolling a, a body roll with a uh modifier of plus one okay plus one so i still want a high number you you yeah you're trying to roll a high number for a success. Okay, you're getting a plus one. This matters because I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm throwing the dice in a certain way. You know, trying to get high numbers. No, you got very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so wait, I get I get the plus one. You get the plus one. All right, then I got a twelve. You got a twelve. Woo! Oh. Well, yeah, you uh, like you slither right in there like some kind of freakish human snake. Mm -hmm. or, um, that's me that's how we rules lawyer you ever seen that episode of the x-files with the, the stretchy dude mm, no, no. Yeah. um i don't remember his name sub witch it's like a sandwich like a, a sub instead of a snake he's a long fellow anyway <laughs> he's a long fellow, and he's he's a long fellow. anyway um, uh cruella while this is happening uh, would you say you're really distracted by your phone, or are you kind of looking around trying to see if you can spot ghosts? Uh, where is your kind of vision? Vision. I'm gonna right say now? like, oh my god, this this has something with windows. The door is open. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, Junkie Trevor, do you want to go in in the main door? Uh huh. Uh, I think. I think that I'm still investigating the phone. Like I still have okay. Corella's phone, like like just still on the message page, just trying to 
decipher something out of the messages because if she's so concerned i seem i'm i seem convinced that this is a tire entirely reasonable message uh exchange that's happening and i don't see anything weird about it uh let's go for a, a psyche role then uh to use oh, your geez. intuition okay yeah. uh what is my psyche what did i change it to okay uh -oh. And Ted, I do want to take a moment to appreciate that you pronounced the word psyche correctly, which is uh, apparently difficult, but you did it. Oh, is that fair enough? That's 2d6 again, right? Yes, correct. Oh, I got a 10 with the minus one modifier. Okay, uh, so that is. Oh, actually, hold on. Is that a win? I was supposed to. Uh, uh, Longfellow, you have a bonus we're going to use later that I forgot to give you on your roll. Uh, so I don't know why, but I will not complain. Uh, just because of the high enough roll, um, Junkie Trevor, you you are you are successful. Uh, you've looked through this phone, and uh, yeah, the the messages are totally normal. But as you look through the pictures, uh, you realize uh, in all the mirror selfies, they're not actually selfies taken of the mirror. Uh, there are selfies taken of oneself in front of the mirror, and you can see that in the mirror it's just a phone in the air. There's not actually a person there. So they're either some kind of non-reflective ghost or possibly a vampire, uh, definitely something from the spectral plane. Oh, well. dear. And so I raise the alarm, ring the bell, and run over to Cruella to inform her of my discovery. And be like, hey, 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 look at this. Uh, this is weird, and I pointed out what I found. Oh my god, can you be a vampire? Like, suck it, vampire. <laughs> 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 well, to, to be honest, Cruella, I've never actually uh, run into a vampire before. Uh, my experience is entirely with a toilet ghost, so this is all new to me. We may even have to revamp our whole business. <laughs> the easier place is the ghost. The day later is the vampire. We can deal with that later. I mean, those guys are immortal, I hear. The house is full of ghosts. Like, if you go upstairs, you will, like, you will hear the voices all night. Yeah, that's a pretty big turn off, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going upstairs by myself. You go ahead. Oh, all right, all right, okay. Deal with vampire later, I guess. I'm running upstairs. <clears throat> uh, so, Longfellow, you see Junkie Trevor start heading upstairs in front of you. Uh, and because of your bonus from when you slithered through that window earlier, uh, you can hear what sounds like uh, chains rattling stairs so i didn't even like land in a different room it just landed like oh you just slithered through the window you're in another side it's an it's an open concept house you know, mm. it's, it's, it's modern it's nice they they used to have a mud room but they they knocked through the wall on that so you kind of slithered into the living room it's nice it's got it's got like a big sectional wrapped around the corner one of those glass coffee tables um, with, uh, the coffee table book from Seinfeld on it that's also just a smaller coffee table uh, which is kind of weird because you've never seen that in print but it, it is there um, you know kitch kitchen's to your right uh, you don't see a dining room um, but you know you don't see the whole house either alright well I dust myself off from the window and I kind of just step over the couch with my shoes on and then I kind of start like racing upstairs because I'm confident that I'm going to be the one to solve the mystery this time. Uh, all right, uh, Cruella, are you following them upstairs? Are you going with them, or are you not going upstairs at all? Not going upstairs at all. I'm not that dumb. All right, uh, <laughs> so let's let's also give you uh, an actual kind of a psyche roll here. Um, just just we're we're gonna go for the luck luck portion of the psyche roll. So let's, uh, you're going to roll two uh, d6 and add your psyche modifier. And um, let How, me know what that number so, is. So then, 
can I say how much is my psyche so you guys can guide oh, yeah. me? Okay, yes. so my psyche is three because she's not the smartest piece, but she's very lucky. <laughs> so So you, you have plus three to your psyche. Yes, but and minus one. And you have minus one to the others? Yes. Oh hell yeah. Excellent. Nice. All right. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So that's why she's not the smartest, but she's pretty lucky. So she's been able to do all of this without being caught, without anything, but she's not the smartest. So uh, so now I roll, and depending yeah, roll what your, number. Yeah, you roll your 2d6, and you're going to add 3 to that. Okay. Oh, you see? 12. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you roll the 12 uh, plus the 3 on top of that. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh shit. wow. <laughs> oh, holy cow. <laughs> I said I was lucky. Well, well, yeah. She just solves the mystery instantly. <laughs> All of the ghosts fly out of the house and we're done. Have a good night, everybody. And the vampire uh, just ate some yeah. garlic by accident. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it, it just melted. Melted. Yeah. It's gone. Um, but uh, what does happen from this is as, as you watch uh, these two bumbling amateur uh, ghost sleuths start climbing over each other, racing up the stairs in an attempt to impress you. you, you feel a familiar presence and you smell a familiar smell behind you and, and you wheel around and it's your, not your most recent uh, spectral ex-husband. He's about three husbands back. Um, he, was, he was a pretty good one. He was a pretty good one. Uh, lower bank account than most, better dude than most though. So like he's standing there, he's got he's got a spectral bouquet of your favorite flowers, although they are ghost flowers, so he can't really give them to you. Um, and, and he's he's just there, and he says, "Oh, I, I've I've missed you, and I've grown so old in the spectral plane. <laughs> uh, I met some of some of your other husbands there, and I just I I wanted to." We all wanted to see you always uh, such a party to be around. Uh, please, please don't, don't leave us. Johnny, I have told you many, many times that I don't like all guys. I like your bank account, but not you. Like, come on. So can you talk to your ex-husband, my ex-husband, ex? -husband, ex Friends, now you, ghost friends, to get out of my house, please? Well, well, you see, the trouble with that is that there's a lot of us who are still technically on the deed. <laughs> so when, when, when we went to the bank to get the mortgage payments done for the home, you know, I, I took on that responsibility to care for you. But... I did end up on on the lead. Like I'm, I'm still technically a tenant. We we all are. There, there's a processes for this, like eviction processes. You'll need to go through. Um. Guys, hey, you long sandwich, <laughs> and <laughs> yes, that's Trevor. Me. <laughs> we need to have a conversation with Johnny. This is the guy that I mean. Like, and he's talking about all his friends living in my house. So we're oh, oh yeah. Are so, you yelling at? We're at the top of the stairs then, and and yeah. she's yelling up to us, and we yeah, just got the there, and we're the like, stairs, yeah. <sighs> I, the moment she starts calling us down, I immediately sprint back down the stairs, and, and I trip them. <laughs> Dude, are you are you actually? Yeah. All Can right, I roll right. opposing to not be tripped, or does she just oh, get yes. like the element of surprise? Um. Ooh. No, I don't think we're going to go with elements of surprise. That's too complicated. As no, we were just fighting to get up the stairs, and so... No, this is, this is a standard... It's expected. Off. Like, yeah, you're fighting to get in the car, you're fighting up and down the stairs. You know what's happening. Oh, boy. Uh, it's I body, got, body roll? I, yeah, I got body a roll. four. Oh, I got a nine with modifier. Well, uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is, Long, Longfellow, you do make it to the bottom of the stairs first. Let me put it out. You, you absolutely make it to the bottom of the stairs at, at neck break speed, one might say. Um, although, and, luckily, narrowly avoiding breaking your neck. And any landing you can walk away from, you know? Not ending up a specter of your own. Uh, and as you lay there and look up, uh, 
Oh, yes, yeah. You nearly became a new friend of ours there, young man. <laughs> I, I put my thumbs up in the air and I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm cool. Everything's cool. <clears throat> Everything's great. And uh, it, as, a, as a side note, just uh, for you, Grisella, did, did your character also take off her cool hat and glasses or was that just you? You're Doesn't... inside. You take off your hat when you're inside. You're uh, going to take off just... your sunglasses. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you couldn't see the screen if I were. Oh, I, <laughs> I was enjoying. Reasons. I was enjoying the cool hat. So, um, so I I reach into my pocket because, as I was saying earlier, I you know I brought the paperwork with us, and so I I have like my little like folder of paperwork that I carry around, and what I've been doing to kind of avoid our you know, our creditors and our angry former customers is I've been doing a lot of forgery. So I kind of produce the paperwork and I, um, I say, Cruella, Cruella, I've got an idea. I'm just walking. Cruella, I got an idea. Oh, and I'm, I'm getting like very faint because I'm in pain. I'm 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 walking towards like we're like in the entry entrance kind of thing, but then we're walk I'm walking towards like the living room kitchen and there's there's like this little car with filled with like cool bottles, like you know, the crystal bottle with liquor and all this mixes and things like that. So it's like I'm gonna make the best recipe for pain. So you will be pristine. Well, I can look to your papers there. So I'm starting to shake something here. Oh, okay. So you're you're mix, mixing up a drink to dull the pain from this injury down the stairs, and and you're also going to take a look at the paperwork. Is that my understanding? Yeah. So is your intent to get Longfellow a little bit uh, a little bit drunk off this drink? Is kind of plan or depending what we find in the papers. All right. Um, well, you, you mix them up a drink and you've got the papers in your hand. Uh, and I guess since you're looking through documents, we're going to need a, another a psyche roll uh, to examine those there documents. It's not more of an understanding. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. That's very correct. Sorry. Much more of an understanding roll, not a psyche roll. Sorry psyche to back backseat GM. No, no, you're right. I'm still uh, still learning. I don't know why I made a point of it. I'm pretty sure both of hers are minus one. No, her <laughs> oh, plus two. No, the oh, psyche right. is plus that's three. Right. Yeah. Very, yeah, that's a different big distinction. Take that, teammate. I'm not going to let you have a, <laughs> any success here. Amazing. Uh, yeah, so let's see how well you can uh, decipher those papers. So then it's my, against mine? Yes, you're rolling for understanding, so I believe you have a minus one to your understanding, so you're going to roll 2d6 minus one. <laughs> Four, so minus uh -oh. one is three. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> is a, they're definitely paper. Uh, you've, made, you've made a great drink, and it's a strong drink. Longfellow's <laughs> enjoying it. Uh, but you are leafing through the papers. But as far as you can tell, they are definitely made of paper. Uh, you've got a strong suspicion there's ink on one side, uh, but you cannot confirm or deny that. All you know is they're definitely all paper. I just give them back to you. Uh, food long sandwich. And, mm. uh... <laughs> that's, that's his porn name. <laughs> Oh yeah, and, foot, and, and foot, foot long, all right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the rumors are rumors are true. Uh, so in in your forged documents, uh, Longfellow, you do happen to have a uh, eviction notice that you had prepared in the case that the pizza shop would be served its own eviction notice, so you could say. We've already been served an eviction. You can't serve us a second eviction. Tie it up in courts for double hours. jeopardy. Yeah, it's it's you're, you're going for a double jeopardy plot. So you do have uh, eviction paperwork previously forged. Well, that's a way better idea than uh, what I thought Longfellow's plan was, and I thought his plan was to just forge a different deed. But I like I like <laughs> that the 
argument even better. I mean, you Longfellow might still just think I'm going to forge a different deed because I need this eviction note just in case <laughs> we get evicted from the pizza place. <laughs> Uh, it is just an asset you have. Let's call it that. <laughs> All right. I um... is an asset man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so I look at the two of them and I decide that I do want to hold on to that eviction plan for later. So I uh, let it go to the floor, which means I'm dropping asset. And I... <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I hang on to the... Uh, the fake deed and I start trying to tr like transcribe the details from this house so that I can, um, I can basically write the, uh, actually, I want to, I want to, can I have a look around to see if I can find the actual deed to this house and just like use my original one as a reference and use my little like whiteout and pen to try to just like take the actual deed that probably has a seal and shit and just write the ghosts out of it. So are, are you trying to do this like, stealthily without anyone seeing you or are you just trying to successfully locate the deed and then you're just gonna like hunker down on the coffee table and fill that bad boy out um i i uh what i do is i note my um asset that i dropped and i say oh Junkie Trevor, can you <clears throat> Junk, Junkie Trevor? Why don't you pick that up for me? My my back's a little sore from my neck's a little sore from going down the stairs. Uh, I I I am gonna have to let Junkie Trevor know that you did just drink that amazing glass of alcohol that was specifically mixed to alleviate your pain. So just in case Junkie Trevor wants to make you pick that bad boy up yourself. Feels like meta gaming to me. I don't know. It is a little bit. It is a little bit. I'm come. I'm. I'm. I'm part in the kimono here. I'm bringing it. Part in the kimono. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I've, I've been waiting for your kimono to part all night. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so I actually I missed that because I was writing a comment. So what was I supposed to do? What someone asked me to do? <laughs> I, I'm trying to. I I tried to get you to come over and uh, and and bend over to pick up the uh, the paper that I dropped. Nice. Um, the assets, yes. Uh, so I'm coming down the stairs. I finally reached the bottom. I sauntered down nice and slow. Um, reached the bottom, and I see the ghost. And I go over to the ghost immediately, and I am not listening to Longfellow and which. Well, then, in that case, my answer to the original question is that I just picked, um, I picked that paper back up and... Uh, while Jackie Trevor is distracting the ghost, I want to like sneak into the study or something to see if I can find the actual deed to kind of like assist in my forgery. All right, uh, you're off to the study, uh, Junkie Trevor. You're up to the ghost, uh, Cruella. Are you just mixing your own drink now? Or are you are you watching <laughs> watching Longfellow go to the study? Are you arguing with Spectral Johnny? I'm just. Sipping my pumpkin spice latte and walk walking behind the the experts, just waiting when the Lady Liberty will show up. Ah, uh, right. Mm. It's, it's, yeah, wait, waiting for them to do their ding dang jobs. Um, <laughs> Trying. <laughs> uh, so, Junkie Trevor, yeah, you're standing in front of uh, Ghost Johnny there. So I um I test if I can like push him out the door because he's. Uh, is he standing right in front of the door? I did, He's like, standing. not forcefully, but just, like, slowly and, like, he sees me trying to do this to him. Uh, yeah, so so uh, he sees you trying to do that, and your hands pass right through him, and he says, uh, I might suggest, uh, if you're trying to move me, if I'm blocking the view, uh, if I can't, if I'm not paying attention, uh, a small fan, a little breeze will help move me out of the way. Oh my goodness, what a great idea. Thank you, Mr. Ghost. Um, Longfellow sits there and wonders why we didn't bring our co-worker who has a ghost for a hand that can touch ghosts, but then he gets back to his work. Demi's on vacation, let her have this. Okay, um, I'm going to run to the van because we, we brought our ghost hunting van and we have something in there. I'm assuming like a desk fan that we'd like to plug in and put on the front of the dash because we it's a junkie van, junkie trap van. Fair. 
anyway, it's got a bunch of stuff in it. So I grab the grab the fan and try and like find a plug near to where the ghost is to to kind of like blow him out the blow him out the house. All right, uh, Corella, do you have any input there? Yeah, I'll, as she was as she was running to the van, I, I'm just yelling from the door. He's like, "Hurry, we can blow the ghost away." <laughs> Uh, and Longfellow, you're in the study there. Um, uh, let's have uh, let's so uh, any any luck finding that there deed? Any anything suspicious you see? Where are you checking? What do we got? We're looking behind pictures on the wall, false bottoms and drawers. Oh yeah, I'm looking inside the record sleeves. I'm looking in you know any obvious cabinets marked important documents. I'm, you know, looking inside of like an old hollowed out Bible, like wherever I can. I'm just throwing shit around. Nice. Um, let's let's get a roll for throwing shit around. Um, what's the best roll for this? I feel like if I'm trying to problem solve, it's maybe it's understanding. understanding. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because I think I have a plus two in understanding. I, I'm going to have to check here. <laughs> Actually, it's psyche. <like>, no. <laughs> no, no, because my character is uh, actually my entire tablet is apparently frozen. So yeah, no, I have a two Ooh. understanding. Excellent. Uh, so that gives me a whopping seven altogether. Whopping. That gives you a whopping seven. Um, that is uh, that is a success, although not in the uh, exact way you expected it. Uh, the deed is not in here but you've you've gone through hollowed out bibles you've gone through record sleeves you've gone found a few false bottom drawers you're coming out of here with one 14 karat gold necklace with a large diamond on it you found about 500 dollars cash few bearer bonds untraceable and an old rolex I have immediately lost interest in the whole ghost thing and i find just like a bag to throw the stuff in and i try to just like saunter out the back door of the house and so I can loop around to the van. Uh, right. is, uh, oh, as my plan is, I'm assuming working because it was suggested by Mr. Ghostman himself. Um, uh, I've already plugged in the fan and it's on. It's blowing him out, out of whatever closest wall or door is there. And so I yell to where I think Longfellow is. I'm like, Longfellow got it all figured out. Everything makes total sense. Uh, we just got to go out and get more fans. Uh, yeah, so uh, you've got Johnny blowing out the door, and he, he's he's trying to walk against the wind, uh, going, uh, hey, hey, no, I'm, I'd like to know that I'm, I'm on the lease. I, I'm on the lease. You have to understand, but he can't. He can't get more than 10 feet closer to the door uh, because of the power of that fan. Uh, so, Cruella, to a certain degree, uh, they are keeping a ghost out of your house. Uh, so I'm going to turn to Cruella and be like, this is this is the problem solver. This is, uh, this is what we came here for. This is your solution. Uh, whenever a ghost shows up, you just got to maybe get an extension cord, run that fan, to the ghost and blow him out the wall. So have I have I made it outside around the building yet? Uh, yes, you you are you are you are quickly approaching the van. You see you see uh, Ghost Johnny struggling against the powerful powerful wind of this home hardware fan on setting two. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so I, I I just throw my bag of loot like as surreptitiously as I can into the van. And then I like just sidle up to go uh, grab Trevor and be or like, okay, yeah, uh, I think I think we're done here. Yeah, let's uh, let's get let's get going, Trevor. I'm uh, I'm hungry. Let's go home and have some pizza. And I kind of like reach over Trevor's shoulders to hand a uh, Raytheon business card to Cruella in case she ever wants to come back. But it's one of the ones that I altered to just have my phone number on it. <laughs> take, take this, ma'am, and I like wink at her, and then I try to like pull Trevor out to the van to get going. Uh, and I just any, like, any... oh, I'm just giving the spiel as as uh, I'm getting dragged out the door. I'm like, thank you for your service. Come back anytime to Raytheon, uh, Ghost, Gust, Ghost, Gustbusters, Gustbusters. Now, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Anytime you need your ghosts gusted or busted. Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for your business. And uh, I'm out the door now. Uh, I, I still don't know what just happened. They're just like run out of, <laughs> out of my house. The ghost is just like kind of a curtain fly in the middle of the door. It's <laughs> like, I'm just holding my pumpkin spine flat on my hand. It's like, where are you guys going? Like, while well, the band disappears and I'm like... I try, I try my best to call out the window. My voice cracks and I'm like, call me. And we drive off into the sunset. <laughs> And, and as you turn around, you see that the study is entirely ripped apart. You've very clearly been robbed. Uh, <laughs> there's no attempt to cover their tracks. <laughs> However, a ghost is no longer in your house. It's outside the house. Hey. It's outside the house. <laughs> and uh, I think that is, a, is a, by, by standards that I understand, I believe that is successful customer service by the Raytheon group. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's the sound of success. <laughs> Amazing. Intense. Yeah. Is there anything else we have? Uh, any housekeeping we have to do here, Paige? You're the host. I, believe... so I know you're in charge of these things. Right. I am. I am. And I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, I believe it's that time of the night where we uh do a couple plugs and exit the internet and go our separate ways for the night so um we'll just start with our gm maybe and if you ted thank you very much for your continuation of our story and if you have i don't know anything inspirational that you want to plug or just something you're doing or something a friend is doing um yeah just a quick little talk. just a quick little yeah. ted talk from you would be great Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quick, quick little TED talk for y'all. Uh, something I would like to plug is a wonderful thing called escitalopram. Uh, and the reason I say that is I have spent many years struggling with mental health. I think everybody should take it seriously. Talk to your doctor. Uh, don't uh, be stigmatized by the ideas of pills. Uh, they can and will help you, and they can and will change your life. And yeah, ask your dealer about escitalopram. Amazing. Thank you, Ted. I had no idea how to spell that. It's all good. <laughs> we got it covered. I think, yeah, yeah you got it. You got it dead on. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ted. And we're going to, uh, I guess, excuse you now if it, yeah, if that's all right. That awesome. Thanks uh, so much, Ted. Uh, best of luck to you, uh, Gisela, in the upcoming election. Thank you very much. And Gisela, would you like to plug anything for the night? It was so much fun. Uh, I, I was... Uh, it, it's the up to my standards of uh, Wednesday night. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, voting is open, so advanced voting is open in Edmonton from 1 to 7 uh, till the 13th, including Thanksgiving. So let's get the millennial vote out there. And if you miss it for any reason, then election day is on the 18th. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can reach me on Twitter or um, in the social media, as long as they're still <laughs> up and running and we don't have another media outage. Uh, other than that, uh, good night and happy Wednesday. Amazing. Thank you, Casella. Let's get, uh, we have a little banners for, yeah, there we go. Links for Casella's um, Twitter and socials. Amazing. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And um Kelly, what about that little uh, little story? Do you have something oh, did, for us? Oh, did you did you need an anecdote? We'd love. I mean, to we're hear we're over time. I'll try. I'll try to a bedtime story. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it's just the funniest thing happened where, like, you know, I I don't know, maybe I got a little neglectful of my health recently, and I took my my first uh, workout session in like many months, just a few days ago, and Oops. it was. Uh, I mean, it's a little embarrassing because, uh, you know, I was trying to, you know, work on work on my hammies and, you know, get down low with the weights and, you know, one foot, step out, step back up, you know, you know, that kind of, you know, pretty, pretty basic workout routine. And uh, but I felt this like awful feeling running right up, right up, the, you know, like the, the let's call it my lower back where my lower back meets my upper leg. 
and I uh, hobbled home and I was in pain the next day and I went to my doctor and he said, yeah, like, no, you've definitely, uh, you, you've done some kind of damage to your glute there. We can maybe do an ultrasound and uh, have it looked at. And I got the results back and uh, yeah, it turns out uh, I, I'm going to have to take a huge break again from working out uh, because of my, my torn bummer lunges. Mm -mm.